So far, we've looked at double integrals over regions that can be easily described in rectangular coordinates. Now we want to look at more curvy regions that can be described more easily in polar coordinates. So the first thing that I want to do is to show how a region that is curvy in rectangular coordinates will look more rectangular in polar coordinates. So I'm going to start with a region that I'm going to call R1 that is a rectangle in polar coordinates. So R in this case is going to be between 0 and 1 and then theta is going to be between 0 and 2 pi. Now I want to look at what that looks like in rectangular coordinates. So here I'm going to have a radius that goes from 0 to 1 and then I'm going to think about that radius is revolving around the plane uh, with angles that go from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to just keep that radius from 0 to 1 revolving around the angles from 0 to 2 pi. And so what I end up with is a more circular region. So this region is a closed circle that has a radius between 0 and 1 and then uh, covers the angles from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll call this region P1. And you can see that the circle which normally would be described by an equation such as x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 is more easily described in polar coordinates where it's a rectangle where r is between 0 and 1 and theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Let's look at a few other regions. So let's look at this rectangle. I'm going to call it r2. In this rectangle, my radius is going to be between 0 and 2. And then my angle is going to be between 0 and 5 pi over 4. So again, I have a radius that goes from 0 to 2. And that's at the angle 0. But then I'm also going to go all the way around to an angle of 5 pi over 4, my radius is going to go from 0 to 2 all the way to the angle of 5 pi over 4. And so I'm going to draw a circular region here that gives me a radius between 0 and 2 and a angle between 0 and 2 pi. So here uh, we have that theta equals 0. Here we have that theta equals 5 pi over 4. And my radius goes from 0 to 2. We're going to call this our region here P2. So that's the polar region that corresponds uh, to R2. Now finally I want to look at a third region. Okay, This region, uh, this rectangle is going to be for an R that's between 0 0.5 and 1.5 and then my angle theta is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. So I can imagine when theta is 0, I have a radius between 0 0.5 and 1.5. And then, so I'm going to think about that as being when theta is 0. But then when theta is pi over 2, I have a radius that goes between one, uh, 0 0.5 and 1.5. And so I get this quarter annulus. And I'm going to call that region P3, okay, which in polar coordinates is described by the rectangle R3. 
And so here we have three examples of curvy regions, okay, it's more circular regions that can be described as rectangles in polar coordinates. So now that I understand a little bit more about how to take those circular regions and describe them in polar coordinates, I want to think about how would I find areas of these circular regions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a uh, one of these kind of general circular regions. So uh, these general circular regions, imagine that I'm going from some angle uh, to another angle. And then I'm going to extend this a little bit farther. Okay, so the idea here is that I'm going to start at some angle. I'm going to call that angle theta equals alpha. I'm going to end at another angle. I'm going to call that angle theta equals beta. And then I'm going to start at a radius. That radius is going to be a radius of, say, r equals a. And then I'm going to end at another radius, r equals b. So this is kind of a general uh, circular region that can be described in uh, polar coordinates. And so what I want to do is I want to find the area that's enclosed in this blue region. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, I'm going to divide this into sections. Each of these sections is moving out radially. Okay, so I'm going to divide this up into sections with different radii or different angles, sorry. And then I'm going to look at it at different distances from the origin. So I'm going to divide this up into these pieces. Okay, so I'm looking at this general circular region. And uh, I'm going to divide up this general kind of circular region or part of a part of an annulus, okay, into these into these sub pieces. Each one of these pieces um, looks like a little rectangle. Now it's not actually a rectangle, but it looks like a little rectangle. It's got you know two flat sides here, and then a little curvy side and a little curvy side. Okay, so this is going to be a little rectangle. I'm going to call this little rectangle uh, delta A. Okay, so a little bit of area. And so my goal here to find the area of this region is to divide it into subregions, little small regions, delta A, and then to sum up over all of those regions, which I will call delta A. So my strategy for finding the area that's outlined by this blue uh, blue outline is to take a sum over these uh, regions, okay, that have a size, let's see, delta A sub ij. I'm imagining that I'm going to index them so that uh, 
so that I and J identify a particular region that looks a little bit like a rectangle, but isn't quite a rectangle. Okay, so that's my goal is to sum up over all of these. And so I need to understand a little bit about uh, what that sum uh, is going to be. So I'm going to zoom in on one of these little rectangles. Okay, so uh, I'm going to zoom in on one of these. So pretend that we have a rectangle that I'm zooming in on here and I'm exaggerating how big it is. Okay, just for effect. So it's not really, when you zoom in, you can see it's not really a rectangle. Okay, but um, it is a region that could be approximated by a rectangle. Okay, so I'm imagining that the distance, okay, from the origin to the beginning of this, this um, all approximately rectangular region is going to be uh, R. So here I'm going to label this as R. And then the distance to the end of it is going to be R plus delta R. The angle here is going to be theta and then inside there it's going to be an angle of delta theta so that on the angle is going between theta and theta plus delta theta. Okay, so this distance here, we're going to think about as being delta r. Okay, so that distance there, we're going to think about it as being delta r for a rectangle. And then this distance, this little curved distance, if you remember something about the arc length of a circle, okay, is going to be r times the angle, so the radius times delta theta. That's going to be this distance right here, which I is, a, is curvy, okay? And then I'm going to pretend that this distance is also the same r delta theta, even though I know it's a little bit bigger, okay? So here I'm thinking about the area inside of delta a i j okay that's going to be the radius for i j okay times delta theta that's one dimension of my approximately rectangular region okay and then times delta r that's the other dimension of my approximately rectangular region. Okay, so we're thinking about this as being like length and this being like width of a rectangle. Of course, the smaller that delta theta and delta r are, then the better the approximation that I get. Okay, so if I want to sum all of these delta delta i a i j's if i want to sum over all of these areas i'm going to be summing r sub i j delta r delta theta i'm just moving the r and the theta around okay i'm going to assume that the delta r's and the delta thetas are all the same uh the same widths Okay, so what I have here is essentially a Riemann sum, okay? So I have a Riemann sum, so that says that if I let delta r and delta theta go to zero, 
then I should get an integ a double integral of r dr d theta. That will give me the actual area of the region. So here I had an approximation of these, or here, if I'm summing over all of them, I get the actual area. I approximated them as rectangles, but now as I let delta r and delta theta go to zero, I'll get a double integral. That double integral, okay, will be for r between a and b, and then theta will be between uh, the angle alpha and beta. Okay, so I can find the area of this region by integrating r dr d theta, okay, from r equals a to b and theta equals alpha to beta. And so this is a integral over a polar region. In general, if I want to integrate over one of these polar regions, and I want to integrate a function f of x, y, dx, dy, so I'm going to integrate a function, okay, then what I do is I do the double integral over a rectangle in polar coordinates, and then it's going to be f of r theta, so now it's a, I'm going to let x be r cosine theta, y be r sine theta, I'm going to make that change of coordinates, but instead of dx dy, I'm going to have r dr d theta. Okay, so what we're saying is when changing to polar coordinates, my rectangle, my little infinitesimal rectangle used to be dx dy, now my little infinitesimal rectangle is r dr d theta. So when you make a change to polar coordinates, you can't just change dx dy to dr d theta, you need to change it to r dr d theta.